Welcome everyone. My name is Ross Grace and I have the privilege and honour of being the Executive Principal of Heathdale Christian College. Today I'm joined by my friend and colleague Yvonne Harvey who has the role of being Principal of the Melton campus. A tradition that we have when we have a gathering Ill, such as this is that we like to commence our time in prayer. So I'd like to lead you in a time of prayer right now. Join with me as I pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the beautiful day that you have created and thank you for the gift of life to enable us to enjoy this day. We also say thank you for the thing, the gift of Heathdale Christian College. It has been you who has called our community into being. It is you who sustains and enables our community and we want to give you the honour and glory this evening. So Father, as we have a conversation around Heathdale at the Melton campus, we ask that you will bless our time together and bless every person that is a part of this live stream. This we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Hey, thank you for finding some time to join us this afternoon. Though it's a little bit different to how we would normally communicate or conduct one of our information sessions, nonetheless, it's really fantastic that you are being able to find the time to join us. Initially, I'd like to speak to you about what makes our Heathdale experience unique and help explain why and how we have provided Christian education for families of the West for the past 38 years. And then I would also like to provide you with some more detailed information about the college and in particular the Christian ethos that underpins the college and the day-to-day -day operations as well as our educational focus including our distinctive curriculum. And then following me, I'll hand it over to Yvonne and she as the Principal of Melton will, uh, will provide you with some very specific information about the programs that were offered at Heathdale from prep to through to uh, year eight, which we will have from the beginning of next year. Yay for that, hey? <laughs> then we'll finish with an opportunity for you to ask any questions that you may have. See, my hope is that you will be able to appreciate Heathdale's rich history, which consists of an extensive network of past and present students, staff, and families. And by being with us this afternoon, you're actually helping us to write the next chapter of the Heathdale story. Heathdale Christian College began just over 38 years ago when a committee initiated by the Werribee Baptist Church and led by Pastor Joe Westlake was set up with the specific goal of having a school in operation by February 1982. And then through a vision, sorry, through a journey of vision, faith and obedience, the college began at our Werribee campus with 37 students from prep through to year seven that who were then combined into three classes. What drew the families of those 37 students together was that they all wanted something far greater than just a good education for their children. They wanted their children to learn from within a context which openly acknowledges that God is an intrinsic part of all aspects of life. Well, by the end of our second year, the college had grown to 60 students and we were now able to expand into both a primary and a secondary school. And today we have a total of 1,770 students across both campuses at Werribee and Melton that form Heathdale Christian College. But one of the sources of ongoing joy for us is the continuous growth of our Melton campus. After beginning as a prep to four school in 2014, we officially moved into secondary schooling this year with the commencement of our year sevens. And our year sevens next year will become our first year eights. And then within a few years, they're going to be our first year 12 class and they will be graduating from our campus and they will be forever known as the class of 2025. Gee, and that's it, not far away, is it? So, which is really exciting, but that's part of our growth. 
you know, the founding families wanted something far greater than just a good education for their children. They wanted their children to learn within the context that openly acknowledges that God is an intrinsic part of all aspects of life. So this is why across both campuses, every school day commences with our staff gathering together for staff devotions. And during this time, we will read the Christian Bible, we will pray, pray together and even have spiritual discussions. And then our staff will, based on this, will take these aspects as they then move into the classrooms and hold devotion and prayer time and praise time with their students, as well as worship songs. And of course, the additional times set aside for one of our core subjects known as Christian studies. In this way, God is inherently part of our daily college life. And the Christian faith is central to everything that we do. Psychologists would tell us that after parents, it is teachers and ch children's peers that have the greatest shaping influence on their precious, precious life. And when you consider that by the end of a prep year, a prep child has spent 1,400 waking hours at school, and then a year 12 child, by the time they've finished, it's 18,200 awake hours at school. It's no wonder that choosing the right school for your child is one of the most important decisions that you will ever make as a parent. So we at Heathrow Christian College would acknowledge that God has designed each and every one of us as relational beings. See, God has created us to live with him and for him. But he has also created us to live in communion with each other. So relationship is fundamental to our being. So that's why we would say caring for your son or daughter and your family is a core part of the DNA of our college. See, when children are placed into our care, it's a responsibility that we do not take lightly. Pastor Westlake and other founding families wanted to provide quality education for their children. So they engaged professionally trained educators to ensure that each child experienced learning success. But they wanted more from the school than just an academic focus. They wanted teachers who would see the students just like a parent does. They see the whole child, not just one or two dimensions. So as the staff and I look at the students who have been placed into our care, the students who are before, them, before us, we see them as a gift from God a young life that has emotional, social, physical, intellectual and spiritual needs to be met. See, this, and we, we approach this because of one of our foundational core theological beliefs, and that is that we believe God has called parents to raise their children. He hasn't asked the school to do this. He hasn't asked the government to do this. He hasn't asked any other authority to do this. It's a call that God has made over each parent to raise their children. And the staff and I do not want to, uh, are prepared to step in and act as a delegate of a parent when your child is placed in our care here at school. But as we do that and take that role of being a delegate, we never ever want to undermine the authority God has given you as a parent. Rather, we desire to partner with you as parents, support and assist you with the try and enabling you to fulfill the call that God has placed on your lives. And see, I believe it's this perspective that forms the Heathdale distinctive. It's what makes us different from other schools in this region. And this tradition continues right through to today as parents and staff want the college to do something far greater than just educate their children. 
we openly acknowledge that God is an intrinsic part of all aspects of life. And our way of doing this is providing what we call Christ-centered or Christian education. But what does that term really mean? You know, it may actually even be a new phrase for you or a phrase that you've heard before, but you're not really sure what it means. You know, at its most basic level, Christian education means that all learning is developed from a biblical perspective. But let me be a little bit more practical with you. So, for example, you know, when we teach our students maths or say the times table, we don't say to the students, two times five equals 10 because God said so. <laughs> That's not learning from a biblical perspective. A biblical perspective has a far deeper and richer starting point. See, a biblical perspective would understand that when we study mathematics, we start to see patterns and order. And this pattern and order is reflective of God's character. And it's just like seeing God's fingerprints. So every time two is multiplied by five, it will equal 10, whether it's, it's the units, the tens, thousands, millions, billions, trillions. The pattern remains consistent and true because it's a pattern that's been created by and reflects our God. So this is what is learning from a biblical perspective means. Or many schools speak of what of the need to teach students the ability to reason and discern. And this is done from a, a, the desire to help students to be good citizens who can contribute positively to their society later on. But and not only later on, but even now. <laughs> but we would agree that this is an important aspect, but say there's more to it than that. See, a biblical perspective would say that discernment and reason is, a, is a, an ability that God has given to each and every one of us to be able to distinguish between right and wrong and therefore gain in wisdom. See, we would need to develop this gift from God. And as we develop these gifts from God, we do so, we make our communities a better place. See, Christian education at Heathdale is unique when it's compared to other schools who may also use this term. See, as a school, we do not prescribe to one particular style of faith or denomination. For example, Heathdale is not a Lutheran school or a Baptist or a Catholic or an Anglican school. Heathdale is endeavours to be guided by biblical principles which underpin the Christian faith. But I'd also want to just say that we are not a multi-faith school that is built on a whole group of different faith traditions and backgrounds. Heathdale Christian College is first and foremost a Christian learning community. We are a school that openly declares that we will celebrate and rejoice in the gospel of Jesus and that through his death and resurrection, each of us are able to enjoy a deep and intimate relationship with God. And as we live and breathe within this relationship, faith is integrated into all that we do, like beginning each day with devotions, where we read the Bible, pray, sing, and even have, hold worship at our assemblies and lunchtime Bible studies. But being a Christian school is more than just adopting Christian practices. Our curriculum is designed in a way, for example, that helps students to understand that faith shapes us and enables us to become authentic followers of Christ. See, so Christian education is not only about learning, but it's also as much about how to live life. And this is our distinctive. And this is what we mean when we say and talk about Christian education at Heathdale Christian College. See, it's this that is the heart of the Heathdale experience. The other significant distinctive I'd like to also bring to your attention is our staff. 
See, each and every staff member who works at Heathdale must have an active Christian faith, along with the expertise to carry out the role he or she has been asked to fulfil. See, this active Christian faith is one of the key selection criteria that we use when identifying new staff. For both teaching and non-teaching staff, every person must be able to demonstrate that they have an active Christian faith. Now, this is really crucial for us because we believe that all staff are positive role, Christian role models. And as their staff carry out their daily work, students may come and ask them life questions, which then the staff are able to answer from a Christian faith perspective. So as a faith-based learning community, Christ, uh, Heathdale has also developed a reputation of being an excellent school. And I must admit, I'm pretty pleased that we have developed such a good and excellent reputation. But do you know what really excites me? It's about this incredible and vibrant learning community. It's actually how our staff are able to successfully support all students, no matter what they are, want to achieve. And especially during this period of remote learning, haven't our staff really stepped forward and shown how they've successfully supported our students? See, even as I think about the class of 2019, our year 12 students who graduated last year and now are our latest members of our alumni. And as they have gone to a variety of places post Heathdale, these have included university, full-time work, uh, traineeship, Christian ministry, TAFE courses, just to mention a few. And as I think about where our 29, class of 2019 went to, it just affirms for me that by providing learning excellence, students are able to discern and develop their God-given potential. And that's our desire, to help them to discover that potential and then to set them up for success. See, I'm convinced with the key elements of a parent partnership, the biblical perspective to our learning, and an excellent curriculum that's developed by qualified Christian staff. These are what makes the Heathdale experience uh, distinctive from what other schools offer in this region. But it's enough from me now. I think it's time that we actually handed this over to Yvonne. And so it's my pleasure to introduce to you Yvonne, uh, who is the uh, principal, as I said, the campus of Melton, and uh, she's going to give you some more details about the program and the curriculum that is offered. Over to you, Yvonne. Thank you, Ross. So as a college, we are informed and supported by various departmental initiatives, the Australian curriculum, quality statements, curriculum guidelines and policies. They are all influenced by our unique Heathdale Christian College style mm. of education. All of these are important for us to consider and adhere to as staff plan the best programs for our students. We're grateful that we are able to work cohesively as a staff team and also form valuable networks with professional bodies as we continue to strive for absolute excellence in our school. And it is also our desire to see every child grow and develop the individual gifts they have and find their place where they can contribute to the group that they belong to. We plan purposefully so that each child is helped to explore and inquire about their world. Staff welcome parent feedback. We begin the parent-teacher partnership prior to the school year as students attend readiness sessions in the year before starting. And it's this parent-teacher partnership it's such an important facet and it's pivotal to who we are at Heathdale and we enjoy getting to know the families across the years that the students are with us. We love to see our students happy to come to school and even happier that our staff feel the same way. It's a wonderful, vibrant learning community where everyone can learn and share and support each other as a wider family of God's children. Respect for one another is a biblical value 
and we work to ensure every person on campus knows that they have an important role to play. We celebrate learning and we teach students how to respond to others positively and build each other up. Language development is supported through rich and varied experiences. Procedures are in place to help our children feel safe and each is helped as staff interact with them to help them enjoy their learning experiences. Learning styles and acquisition of concepts does differ between students. While we have strong community, coursework and school programs, we also make sure that we are recognising the individual differences within each student. Regular testing and assessment occurs to monitor student progress. We celebrate with our students when they move forward in their learning and share ideas, creativity and knowledge. Data driven information about student progress is a valuable tool and we use it in conjunction with knowledge of student learning preferences as we plan and deliver the college programmes. Our head of learning enhancement is Chris McClelland. She leads a team of dedicated staff who work with students to enrich and support their learning. And this includes students who might need some temporary assistance with the reading programme through to those that do require individual learning programmes. It is important that each child can happily participate and learn how to make good and wise choices. These are life lessons that if learnt well will be the foundation for their future. In Christian life studies students will be involved in prayer, in Bible reading, discussions, singing, acting and movement. Our students ask the best questions and this questioning combined with considered responses is encouraged in our students. And we will celebrate Easter as the biblical story of the cross and God's plan for us through Jesus, as well as the Christmas story of a baby born to us. Our students know how valuable they are in God's sight, serving others, being friendly, forgiving others, practicing kindness, it's all part of our daily normal day at Heathdale. So on to literacy and numeracy. They are foundational at Heathdale, along with sciences, humanities and technology. Appropriate challenges for each student to understand their role in the learning process. And we encourage active focused learning, be that as individuals, in groups or as a whole class and staff work in teams to ensure activities are well planned, organised and reflective of the students needs. Ongoing evaluation and assessment is important, as is the regular communication that we have with our parents on a child's developing skills through two major reporting cycles and subsequent parent teacher conversations. Every student learns mm. and we want to make sure that they do so confidently while adding to the learning of everyone else around them as well. We have a comfortable and attractive school uniform. We have out of school hours programs for primary school and we have before and after school care. Vacation care is available in the holidays and on student free days. And we also have a private music school program that gives parents and students the choice of what instrument they would like to learn through individual lessons. Learning for Heathdale students means making the most of every single day program and opportunity. From the classroom where students may spend the majority of their day, they will at times move into other classrooms. So they will do library, art, music, French and outdoors for PE and sport. And these memorable opportunities will be involved for, to add to all of our students experiences. And technology is also a part of our learning platforms and the students learn that this tool opens up many opportunities to expand and challenge their thinking and experience. And at the moment, we're also even going to have a remote Lego Masters happening. <laughs> Incursions and excursions are fun and learning times that provide rich language and interests. These are the days where parents can come along and have an opportunity to be involved and your support is always appreciated. Focused teaching ensures the programme is honed to maximise student learning. 
Staff teams meet regularly every week to plan and evaluate year level curriculum for each subject time is given to ensure students at each level are immersed in active and relevant coursework. And we invite our students to own their learning and understand the best way that they can learn. And as our students progress through the primary years into secondary school, we wish to give them as many opportunities to participate as responsible community members who have much to offer. So we have house and class captains, we have choirs, music programs, they lead assemblies, they participate in public speaking, they do performances, part of a sporting team, and that all helps them find their place to grow in confidence and serve each other and the school in many different ways. We have camps, we have house activities, we fundraise. So there are a few of the ways students can get involved with leadership in the upper primary years, as well as into year seven and eight. It's a fabulous place to be, mm. and it would be great if you come and have a look. Mm. So I'm going to pass back to Ross on to the next section. Hi. Thanks, Yvonne. And uh, look, I must admit, uh, listening to this one, I thought, oh, maybe I might go back and become a student at school <laughs> again. Oh, some of the fun things are, looks fantastic. So thanks for sharing those things. What I did forget to say to the folks at home uh, was that even while we were speaking, if you wanted to add a, uh, ask us a question, mm -hmm. you could easily do that by putting uh, your question in the chat line. And then we've got a team who's working behind the scenes who gather up those questions for us and then forward them through to uh, through to us. Uh, so if you've got a particular question, we would uh, like to uh, ask you to use that uh, chat facility. In fact, one's already popped up there already. So thank you to that person who put that one through. We'd love to have some other questions. Uh, so please uh, make use of that because the reason we're here is to make sure that we answer your questions. So Yvonne, I see that the first question is saying that even though the school still at this point, we know where we've got 226, I think it is 227 students from prep to year seven across the college, then, you know, it is relatively small, but it continues to grow. But, is, but have they, can they still, is it too small to have any camps? Now you didn't mention camps at the end of that last bit before. So talk to us a little bit about maybe even year seven camp in particular. No, we are definitely not too small because I love camps and excursions. <laughs> yeah. So um, we've got really fabulous camps and excursions. So even down at the preps, we do a really beautiful teddy bears picnic. Um, we've had trips to um, MSO for music. We go into the city, um, heaps and heaps of incursions and excursions. We have water people come in. We have sustainability come in. Um, so there's lots on offer for excursions mm. and incursions and for camps. Our five sixes have been currently going to Mill Valley Ranch, which has been a wonderful mm. outdoorsy experience with horse riding and quite a rustic yeah. um, fun camping experience. And this year we had booked for our year sevens to go to CYC uh, Christian Youth Camps in the city. It has been postponed for the minute just due to COVID, mm. um, but it's still on the cards and it's definitely something that we are putting in place for our year sevens. And we thought a city experience would be a fantastic way to start. And we've got heaps and heaps of fun things to do mm. in the city with them. I, I've actually been to that uh, campsite a couple of times at the one in the city. So it's near, down near the end of Burke and William Street and it's fantastic and the mm. access that it has to the variety of things at the in, in the city, but what a really ex exceptional experience that will be for the year seven team. And uh, hopefully that uh, that by I think it's in term four that you reschedule. Yep. Yeah, yep. so that by, that by term four we'll be allowed to have camps, which will be yeah. fantastic. And we're busy planning as well for subsequent years yep. coming yep. in uh, for year eight, for year nine. Um, so we're pretty excited while we're exploring yeah. what we're going I, to do. I noticed something else you said there before, but the, talked about the grade five and six uh, classes joining the Werribee people for the camp. So is yes. that something that you're going to do longer term or is it just something that you're doing while we're growing as a school? Yeah, so while, while we're growing, uh, we're currently joining with the Werribee campus. We do like during the year, even though we're smaller, our children to have the experience of a big event mm, as well. Yeah. So we pick and choose different events during the year for which ones that we all join together with. Eventually we'll probably become so big that we don't mm, all fit yeah. in one camp, 
but while we're little there's plenty of opportunities to uh, team yeah, up that's good and and even over this uh, COVID period has even been seeing the teachers from both campuses mm -hmm. uh, team up and actually doing and pre preparing work for the students for each other campus which is yeah. lovely so it's, it's that's really lovely one school even yeah, though we've got school. two campuses where that's that one mm -hmm. school feel so thanks oh second question's coming and this is one it says what are some of the extracurricular activities available at Melton? Now, I know you mentioned a couple, but maybe the thing is that with this one, if you wouldn't mind, Yvonne, just actually even going into a little bit more detail about some of those extracurricular yeah. things. So, yeah, what do we can So offer? The, the beauty of the Melton campus is that there's lots of space and it's, it has a really lovely country feel. And because we have a, a, a lot of space and we have a 50 minute lunchtime, that gives us a lot of opportunity to do lots of extracurricular items. Mm. So we have a gardening club oh. where the children go out and do build, um, make, build, uh, sow their own vegetables and water them. We have a STEM club, which is happening. Uh, we have learning enhancement. Sorry, can I interrupt you? Sorry. STEM club? What, what, what do you yeah. mean by STEM? So club? STEM is science, technology, engineering and mathematics. So children make little robots ah, or they okay. design. You've, you've probably all been watching the Lego Masters at the moment. I know yeah. we have in my house. <laughs> yeah. So that's a perfect opportunity of what some STEM club activities mm. might look like. Mm. Yeah, good. Sorry, and you didn't no, just no. mean to say about learning enhancement. Yep, learning enhancement. They have a special place uh, where children can go in just if they're feeling uh, a little bit unsettled in the day or they want some extra support. Mm. And then we we have the most beautiful library. It's it's um, <laughs> the loveliest place in the world. It's got green carpet and it looks like you're walking into a woodland and the, we have library club there that children can mm. go into. Uh, we've also we've got a, a chess club that happens. We've got board games that happen and we've got really good music clubs as well. So there's choirs, there's dance. Mm. Uh, there's there's so much to do. We even we do ha have our own instrumental music teachers coming yep. in as well yep. uh, and they come in and they teach flute and piano and percussion and guitar, brass. So if there's something special that you want, we are definitely open to finding it. And have you had like a, a jazz um, a dance or, or a dance something, a movement? To, yep. Uh, or, yep. So yep. What, that was last more last year, wasn't it? Not so much this year yet? Yes, yes. So we mm. lots of the children have been joining in on dance clubs with mm. a dance teacher and uh, they've been highly successful. So when we have our assemblies, we have a bit of showcasing Mm. Uh, or a performance at the end of the year and children get up and show what they've been learning in their clubs. The, the, the clubs are really fun so mm. we run them for half of lunch and as soon as the bell goes you see all of the kids going <laughs> off uh, to the particular clubs that they're interested yeah. in that they sign up for. And this is just part of every day. It yep. just it's not, every lunch time and there's no additional something. charges. This is just part of being yeah. on the Melton campus. Oh, sport! I forgot sport. Thank you. <laughs> Cricket, basketball. Mr. Williams is running them all on the courts, yeah. running them all on the courts at the back of the school. Great. Oh, that's good. So there's plenty of opportunities yep. outside of the classroom as well as inside. So thank you for that. Another question that's come through, and and this is. Uh, one of the things that uh, most people want to understand because mm. unfortunately you know in uh, you even talked before about having some spaces and then sometimes they in schools they have this space but then they become known as dark spaces mm. which is then things like bullying uh, starts to take place so so in from your perspective of when, when as the principal of Melton you know a talk to us about bullying and then also in terms of the occurrence of that and if and then how you manage that. Mm. It, it's such a good question to ask about this. Mm. So when our children come in at prep, this is something that we begin to teach children about constantly. So obviously we teach from a biblical perspective, which means love each other. Mm. And so what we term uh, bullying to be is rather being mean on purpose mm. because little children don't really understand what it means to bully all mm. the time mm. that what they see it as is they're just being mean or they're taking mm. someone's toy or something's happening it's not until we get into the later years that 
um, people are conscious, consciously bullying mm. uh, like that. So we, we teach the children that being mean on purpose is not nice mm. and and not what God wants either. So our teachers yeah. are really hot on making sure that they are active during yard time. And if anything happens, the first instance, the children go to the homeroom teacher and they talk it through. And mm. the teachers are excellent at them making that a learning opportunity where we can all learn as a mm. class of how we should behave appropriately. And that includes getting children to be assertive mm. and standing up for themselves and explaining, hey, I don't like that. I'm going to make a different choice. We have choice mm. wheels at our yep. school and children uh, can then choose a different activity. If parents or children feel that it's really not going very well, mm. then we've got other help available as well. We've got a great pastoral care team and we also have our learning enhancement team who are mm. able to assist as well in different matters. Yeah. But I can genuinely say mm. since I've been there and in my third year, the instances of being on mean on mm. purpose are, are really rare. And I'm not just saying that because no, I work there, no, but no. it's true. It, it, they really are quite rare. Yeah. So I, I'd love to say to our families who are tuning in today that there's 1,770 angels at <laughs> Heathdale Christian College. No, we've got 1,770 students and they and there's moments they make good choices mm -hmm. and there's moments they make poor choices. But one of the things that we do is I like what you say there, that if someone is actually making those targeted, consistent behaviours towards another student, yes, we will, yeah, we will we'll be that. proactive. But I think the other thing you touched on is really important too, is that this, we don't also treat it as just a, it's our issue between the students. Mm -hmm. We actually say it's a family issue. Yep. So to be proactive in even contacting the families yep. about this, but also say to families, hey, if you're aware of something that we're not aware of, Give us that feedback because we're, that's that's what the teamwork in this uh, is about. So and per perhaps it's important as well to mention about cyberbullying. Yeah, that's because that's, good one. That, yeah. that's that's obviously a, a high uh, something that's on everybody's mind uh, within schools, particularly at this time in remote mm. learning. Mm. We we unashamedly uh, ask students that they hand their mobile phones in mm. uh, to the school and at the beginning of the day and the end of the day because. We don't want children distracted mm. by uh, mobile phones that are, that are occurring during the day. And if there is anything that does occur in the cyberspace, we've got lots of resources on hand to help people. But we encourage our children to be safe online and mm. report anything that is not quite right. Mm. And they're great at that because, mm. because they know it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Well, that's... That's speaking into the thing I said to you before about uh, having that sense of uh, discern and reason mm. and having the ability to understand the difference between right and wrong and therefore the gaining of wisdom. And that's part of what is underpins both our behaviour management program as well as our yep. cyber bullying program. Help the kids to understand what's the difference between right and wrong, mm. gain that wisdom, but also then give them the skills to actually be able to know what to do with mm. that and then the support for that. Yeah. Last question that's going to come our way, and it's asking uh, a question that's about uh, the, some of our learning support and how the, the needs for our students. So how do we support students in their learning? That, that's a great question, isn't it? Mm. Because at the end of the day, we all have needs and we all have areas that we're really good at and areas that we're not quite so good at. And it may be that your child comes into the school and they've got a few gaps in their learning and, and we need to plug those gaps. Mm. So dependent on where, which year level your child comes in at, if your child comes in with an already uh, found perhaps learning disability or a gap that they've got, mm. then we use that paperwork and what we do is we make a plan for the child. So as I said earlier, Chris McClellan, she heads up mm. learning enhancement and we have two uh, learning enhancement teachers and then we have a big team of learning assistants. Mm. And the learning enhancement teachers, they take out small groups and they work within the classrooms and they look at individual plans for students. So let's pretend that a particular student is dyslexic, then we can work heavily 
on making sure the child is keeping mm. up with the program. Mm. I don't just want to focus on one end though of gaps. I want, also want to focus on the other end mm. where you might come in and say, my child has a real strength in the area of maths. What can you do to extend them? Mm. So then we have other programs. We have um, uh, Maths Olympiad that's happening at the moment while mm. the children are off and they're, they're really enjoying that. We team up with gateways and we provide different days to enhance people. So we do have a lot of programs that mm. we put in place, but our main aim, and I want to make this really clear, is no matter where your child comes in at, our main mm. aim is that we achieve a year's learning growth for their age. Mm. So wherever they start mm. and if we can achieve a year's learning growth mm. for that child, we're happy bunnies. Yep, no, it's good. Also, I like the, the, one of the other things which I know about with the, those supporting those able and uh, gifted students is we also recognise that we don't actually have the capacity to always do all things on campus. Mm. So to actually refer them to places like Swinburne University yep. who run clubs and activities outside of school as well. But that's good. Yep. But it is, I love the fact that we're supporting each student. And as I said before, setting each student up for learning success. So as you've been listening to us during this time, I hope you've been able to get a sense of that Heathdale Christian College is a faith-based learning community that earnestly wants to live an authentic, God-honouring manner and continually striving for the quality and excellence in everything that we do. I also hope that you've been able to hear that we are a faith-based learning community that is deeply, uh, that is committed to deep and rich learning and a faith-based learning community that is nurtures students in the love of Christ so that they can discover this world with a sense of awe and wonder. And as a faith-based learning community, we are that enables students to flourish as they as young men and women who are then eager to go and seek how to serve. And as a faith-based co uh, learning community, that encourages students to discern and develop their God-given potential. So where to from here? You know, there's still some significant information around enrolment and fees that we actually haven't covered tonight, but you can actually find all of that information on our website. And I would ask and encourage you to read this information really carefully. And I'm, I'm probably aware that some of you have already submitted your child's application. But for those of you who you haven't yet, can I encourage you also to request an application pack through our website. And in line with our enrolment policy, all families who apply are not guaranteed to have an interview. We will, some families will be offered the opportunity to attend an enrolment interview. And we want to have interviews will begin in, in the coming week and then offers and notifications will be uh, conveyed shortly after this. So as, uh, as I've said to you before, that we'll be a team who are still behind, working behind the scenes, gathering our questions and have been presenting to us. Our team is still also going to stay online for a little bit longer after our time. And if you've got any further questions, please feel free to ask them there because our team will be more than happy to answer them. So I want to say thank you again for taking time to join us online. And I hope that you've found this information session really informative and helpful. So God bless and bye for now.